hey, come here, come here. Have you heard that we've got a sneak peek of the new film honoring the code? Oh yeah, 12 minutes, fantastic. You're gonna love it, but it's a secret. It's a secret clip, but we're gonna share it with you. Hey, I'm Eugene Cuevas, director of the film Honoring the Code, Warriors and Moral Injury. I'm so excited to bring you a sneak peek of this new film. Enjoy. All right, look, you can go ahead and just state your name and all that information. <laughs> that, uh, My name is Washington Booker III. I, uh, joined the United States Marine Corps in 1967. I'm Lieutenant Colonel John White. I'm a senior intelligence officer for the Mississippi National Guard. My name is John Reitzel. I'm a U.S. Army Colonel retired infantryman. Uh, Robert F. Dees, Major General, U.S. Army retired. Kyle Radke, uh, Air Force Captain. Miosha Thomas. United States Navy veteran. If you happen to stumble into the church that I passed I'm known as Reverend Dr. John L. McCarty. Uh, my name is James Joyce, um, Sergeant Major, U.S. Army retired, 24 years active federal service. I'm Major Micah Taylor with the 172nd Airlift Wing. My name's Jeremy Rawls. Um, I got out of service as a sergeant from the Army National Guard. I did 11 years total, and four years out of that, I was uh, uh, active duty Marines. My name is uh, Jim Mukoyama. I'm a retired uh, Army Major General. Lieutenant Colonel Terry Don Neely, and I'm an AIRVAC flight nurse. Dr. Donna E. King, Army. I'm J.T. Cooper. Uh, I was, was in the 10th Mountain Division, Fort Drum, New York. Uh, my name is uh, Jim Reinhardt. Uh, I am a Marine. You know, I've been told I got PTSD, but I don't. I have moral injury. I define moral injury as the impact on a person's sense of meaning and values and their basic moral foundations when they're in situations where they have to violate their core values. That can come from something they did, something they failed to do, or something they witnessed. You're raised a certain way and you have certain values, certain concepts that you grow up to learn and understand what is right and wrong. Now, you grow up and then you join the military, all right? You join the military, you develop a military code. You know, when you go to basic training, the core concept is that everybody becomes the same. Uh, they shave your head, everybody gets screamed at, everybody nowhere ain't. Uh, if they could, they'd take your skin color away because everybody gets treated the same. And it's one of the first times where there really wasn't a whole lot of difference. Yes, Cody Sergeant! They, they're very good at breaking you down to nothing so they can build you back up. When you go to, you go to boot camp and you go to infantry training school, they constantly drill into you that your job is to close with and kill the enemy. But killing is not a, uh, I, I don't know, they turn it into something and make it acceptable to you. You know, they run you till you almost fall out and then you just, you're saying kill, kill, kill. When you come out on the other end and, and you, you've had people running next to you you know, to get hit, and you running, and you watch them out of the corner of your eye as they fall forward, and they dead before they hit the ground. And these are people that you, you sat around in the foxhole with, that you sang with, and you know, it ain't, there's nothing uh, glorious uh, or, 
all that other stuff, none of that stuff matters anymore. But the morality of war is always in question. The first time I actually had a human being in a peep site, I blinked and I thought to myself, every day of my life I've been taught that thou shalt not kill and I'm about to end this guy's life. And I pulled the trigger. And I can tell you this, it gets easier and easier as you do it more and more. And the, the more you do it and the easier it gets, the worse you feel. Moral injury is not necessarily the result of immoral actions on the battlefield. Uh, the reality is that good people often have bad outcomes. Good people who make good decisions, who make right moral decisions, sometimes uh, experience devastating consequences. One day they were on a mission and there was gunfire being exchanged from our son's company and a building that the Taliban was shooting out, out of every crevice, every window, every hole they possibly could in this very small village. And uh, our son, Sergeant, told him and t told he and his battle buddy to kick the doors in and, and return fire. And when our son did, he shot at a very tall figure that was shooting at him. And the sand over there is like talcum powder. And so when there's any activity, it makes a sandstorm inside the building. And there was smoke from the weapons. So when the smoke settled, our son and the company realized that he had shot a little girl that this Taliban had pulled in front of him as a human shield. Soon after that, we got a, horror, uh, a phone call from our son and I could hear it in his voice. Mom, mom, something horrible has happened today. First thing, of course, are you okay? No, I'm not okay, but I'm not hurt. I said, what happened? And he began to tell me what happened. And his voice was shaking. He said, Mom, can you get me home? Mom, do you know anybody that can get me home? October 3rd, 1993, we're on the ground in Mogadishu, Somalia. And, uh, middle of hell, really. And I hear over the radio, you know, we got, we got a KIA. They said, who is it? Somebody called out Martin's name over the radio. I was, I was in a different part of the battle than he was, so I wasn't right there when he got killed. But I knew the moment he got killed, and then I knew that the rest of the night was hard. It was hard anyway. I mean, to look down the barrel of a gun and take someone's life to save your own, it's not easy. Uh, it gets easier. It can get easier. It got easier when I found out Martin was dead. A couple of weeks, a month or two before that, the first time I was asked to fire, I uh, asked my lieutenant three times. He's like, Cooper, take that guy out. Sir, you want me to, you want me to kill this guy? Yes, Cooper, fire. Sir, are you sure? I'm a 60, I, I got the big gun, I got, sir, are you sure you want me to take this guy out? Took me three tries to pull the trigger. Not that I was hesitating, it's just this was broad daylight. This guy's taking pot shots at us from a 
crowd. And I got asked to kill him. It's not easy. So there was an incident that occurred in the Mekong Delta when I was a company commander uh, in Vietnam and we had just overrun an enemy position and we had killed several enemy and as a matter of fact, literally, I had three bodies of Viet Cong at my feet and the time a unit is most vulnerable is right after a victory. Now I was the guy in charge, I was the professional and I knew that. So I was on my radio talking to my platoon leaders because I was a company commander and I had two, 200 soldiers I was in charge of. And so I'm talking to my platoon leaders and I'm uh, kicking rear end and taking names as we say. And I told my platoon leaders, reorganize your units, take care of your wounded, redistribute your ammunition, look for enemy avenues of approach. Now, while I'm doing all of this, suddenly I stop and I look at the bodies at my feet and I realized that something had happened to me. Something had hardened my heart. Only moments earlier, these were alive human beings. These were people who had families. They had loved ones. They had emotions. They were fighting for something as important to them as I was fighting for. I was treating them like bumps on a log. And then I remembered Jesus' Sermon on the Mount when he told us to pray for our enemies. So in the middle of all this stuff going on, the so-called fog of battle, I stopped and I said a prayer for the three Viet Cong and their families. And now that I look back on it, I know I was praying for myself as much as I was praying for them. You've just watched a sneak peek of our new film, Honoring the Code. I have no doubt from watching this that you've got a good glimpse of what our veterans are facing when they come back from combat duty. The struggle that moral injury causes not only for them, but also for their families. This is an important film. It's a film that every veteran needs a copy of, particularly every combat veteran and their families. So we made a commitment to give this film for free to veterans. But to do this, we're gonna need your help. So I'm asking you to help us accomplish this mission to make sure that veterans understand moral injury and get the help that they need. To find out what you can do to join us, go to honoringthecode.com and click on the donate tab. Thank you.